In the last video, I introduced to you fields. And if you don't remember what we did last time, let me just jog your memory. So we said that a field is defined in the following manner, but you can't just have a field, you need to have two elements. So you have, so you have addition and you have multiplication. And, and if, and if, this, and if a set um, given, so if a given set F and along with addition and multiplication follows the following nine axioms we give that set the name of a field so you may remember we did we started with addition and we had um, additive additive commutativity we had uh, additive associativity we had additive neutral we had uh, additive inverse additive inverse and we had multiplicative commutativity multiplicative associativity multiplicative neutral and we had uh, multiplicative identity and to tie both of these sections up so all these are for um, multiplication and all of these are for addition these axioms and if you are confused by the word axiom axiom is a fancy way to say properties so any set that has the following nine properties will be given the name of a field and the double uh, the double uh, bar f is called a field so it's a set and and as i was saying the last one is distributivity so let me write these so if you if we have a x plus y will be equal to y plus x for all so the upside down a is for is for all you translate this in your head and if you want me to explain it in further detail go in the previous video and just as a quick review the, the, the flipped uh, e the, the flipped uppercase e means there exists there exists okay so additive commutativity is x plus y is equal to y plus x for all x and y that are that exist within our given field uh, additive associativity is bracket x plus y plus z is the same as me saying x plus bracket y plus z for all x uh, y z which are elements of the field and if you already know all of this then you can forward um, in the in the latter part of this video uh, but if you just want to you know make sure that you have everything then I would advise you to watch this so there exists a zero in our field uh, which implies that if we have a given number and we add this zero to it we will still have our value so this is for all x living within within our field additive identity sorry add additive uh, uh, inverse uh, so this would be the additive identity I don't know if I mentioned this last time the zero is called the additive additive identity identity so uh, additive inverse would be that for for all for all X elements of f there exists there exists a negative x which is also part of the field such that if you were to add those x plus negative x you would have your additive identity which is zero for multiplicative commutativity you had x times y is equal to y times x for all x and y's living in the field for multiplicative associativity you had x times y times z is equal to x times y times z for all x y z in the field for the multiplicative neutral there exists a one in our field which implies that if you if you were to take an element within which which was in your field and you were to multiply this by one you would still have your element and this is for all x uh, which are elements of the field and finally the last one for multiplication so that's multiplication that's that's addition that's addition so the last one here would be for all for all x's 
living in the field, there exists an x inverse, which is also part of the field, uh, this is such that if you were to multiply both of them, you would get your identity. And that's a similar situation to right here. So these two match exactly. So that's a dot. So x times x inverse will give you your multiplicative identity. And the last one that we had, the last one was actually quite interesting. And so the last one that we had was distributivity. So if you were to, if you, if you were given x times y plus z, plus z, uh, that would be the same as me saying x times y plus x times z for all, for all x, y, and z which exist, so are, are elements of our field. So this uh, is the left-handed ones. In some textbooks, so this is extra, This you don't need this. So in some extra, uh, not some extra textbooks, in some textbooks, you are given the other, the right-handed and distributivity as well. And if you're taking linear algebra, it does make a difference whether you're distributing some, some value from the left or whether you're, distrib you're distributing sorry, I can't say distributing, um, whether you are um, giving out, that's the same thing as distribution, so whether you are giving out uh, the variable from the right side or the left side, and the left side and the right side do make a difference because some, there do exist, there there are some fields that, that fill, fill one of the distributivity, so this is not important for us, that's why it's in green, but it's something extra. So another portion, another type of distributivity is if you are given x plus y and you were to multiply it by by z, then you, then you would get something like this, x times z plus x, sorry, so y times z. And this is for, obviously, for all x, y, Z, which are elements of the field. Now, finally, so all, so I'm going to think of them as just one, as the distributivity one. So last time I said, a, a set is a field, is a field if and only if all nine axioms are satisfied. Okay, I hope this makes sense. So let me give you some examples of fields. Some are boring, some are more interesting. Well, some of the boring ones are the ones that we will be dealing with within this this course because as i mentioned in one of the introductory uh, videos of 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 this playlist um is that well real an analysis is interesting however complex analysis is even more interesting than real analysis however uh in this in this course, we will be just dealing with real analysis and later on we will be defining what a limit is and how it works and, and the mechanics behind behind that. So some boring, some, some boring examples of fields, boring uh, examples of, of fields are things like, so number one, are like the reals, the reals, because we know how usual addition and, and uh, multiplication works works in these. And another example of a boring field would be, uh, I don't know, the, the rationals, the rationals, because even even in the rationals, addition and multiplication are relatively, the, they're relatively same. Now, you might be wondering, are the integers, are the, are the integers an example of a, of a field? So, this is actually important. So let's say you get an you you get a question and they ask you. So just for example, prove that a set is not is not a field. Now, don't waste your time on proving the ones that you know that the set will most likely satisfy. So what I'm talking about is axioms. So don't don't waste your time on proving axioms that you know that will be successful. 
you just need to find one example that does not satisfy the axioms laid out by fields. So that one example is called a counterexample. That's called a counter, counter, counter example. So you say this is this is how you say. So to show to show that your set your set is not a field let me provide you with a counter with a counter example example so sorry about the x that's that's a that's a x so a counter Counter, okay, so, oh, that, okay, sorry, sorry for the misspelling. It's counter example. And then you show whatever, whatever axiom fails uh, within the framework of that, of that field. So you might be saying, well, that's wonderful. You can, you, you can talk about stuff, but give me an example so that's what I'm gonna do now so you may be wondering as I said before are the are the integers a field so are our integers are are so wait so let me let me put it the other way so are the integers a field that's a very interesting question so I know that the, the, the integers are not a field, so all I need to do is to provide you with, with one counterexample. How, how do I do that? So let's, let's go back and let's look at all of our axioms. Which one do you think will, will most probably not be satisfied by the integers? So let, just to jog your memory, the, 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 the integers look something like this. They, dot 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 then you are negative three negative two negative one zero one two and so on now uh, th some people tell me that well th this is a complicated way of writing this well th another way of writing this is just simply th th that the integers are a positive and negative version of zero one two and so on these two things are equivalent these two sets are equipped that's supposed to be a twisted equal sign but these two things are equivalent so are the integers a field well let me provide you with a counter example the problem with with the integers is the axiom of the multiplicative uh inverse so as long as so so to show to show that the integers are not a field I need to provide you with a counter a counter example So this is an example. So let so let x be equal to two. Okay, we remember that the multiplicative uh, inverse uh, axiom says that for for all x's in the field, there exists an x inverse which is also part of the field such that if I were to multiply these, I would get I would get uh, our multiplicative identity which is one so the only way so if you if if you have this x times x inverse gives you two now we have to put two here because that's what we are given and sorry sorry i put a two there one you multiply something with the inverse you get one this is the multiplicative multiplicative uh identity so uh, you are given two as your x. Let's not talk about this for a second. Let's just leave this as a box. So, and and we know this is one. Now, 
in your mind you know how to do this what the only way that you could ever make a two into a one is if if and only if you multiply the two by one over two so you you are basically dividing the number by two that's what's happening here and i talked about that in in a previous video i talked about how a division is just another type of multiplication there's no such thing as division as division it's it's all multiplication with fractions so the only way to make 2 into a 1 is if we were to multiply it by 2 inverse however 2 inverse is not an element of the integers therefore the answer to the the, the, the answer to this does not exist and by by definition we know that if it's not in the field if if there does not exist. So if there exists an x inverse, which is not in the field, so let me actually make it make it red to make it clear. If it does not ex if it's not in the field, then x uh, times whatever value cannot be equal to one. Therefore, it fails. So uh, the, 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 it fails. So uh, let me write it here. So. Uh, so my solution is, my answer is integers fail, let me make it red, fails axiom mi, which is multiplicative inverse, fails mi, therefore the integers not a field, not a field. I hope you can see that. So it's, it's, it's not, it's not a field. And as you can see from my logical process uh, that I took or through my work is I didn't need to, you know, prove all the other eight ones and, and show you that it fills one. All you need is one counterexample. That's all it takes to prove that something is not a field. I hope this video was helpful to you.